Hello everybody, welcome to the Stoke Mandeville Classic Surgery webinar series. I'm James K.K. Chan. Reconstruction of the joints in the hand is a problem that modern medicine has yet to solve. Of course, our joints are vital for our hand function. They need to go through a wide range of motions smoothly and without pain and in doing so without compromising the other joints in our hands. And of course, these are all intricately linked. They also need to tolerate all the forces that go across them, the forces that bend the joint and the forces that straighten them. And they must necessarily be stable. And so to reconstruct a joint, taking all these things into account is impossible, or is it? People have tried medications, injections, surgery, in terms of fusion or joint replacement. But all of these have faced problems, the lack of effect, the lack of durability, the lack of stability and stiffness. And none of these solutions have come anywhere close to what we've been given at birth. Now, another way of restoring joint function is to replace like with like. And this is the topic of today's webinar. Yoda Lin is Professor of Hand and Plastic Surgery at the Changong Memorial Hospital in Taiwan. And he's one of the leading surgeons in the world pushing the frontiers in vascularized joint transfers. That means we're transplanting joints from the toes to the hand. So Professor Lin, welcome to the show. Great to have you kick, um, kicking off our second season of the webinar series and thank you for joining us. Yeah. So, thank you James, thank you for the invitation. Um, today I'm going to share my experience of uh, uh, vascular joint but we definitely was uh, focusing on the uh, PIP joint transfer. And well, I, when I discussed with James that uh, we, we already have a lot of uh, speech during the last year. And uh, maybe some, some of people already be quite familiar with uh, this uh, vascular joint transfer already and from some other webinars. And today I would like to share more about some surgical technique of how I do the uh, PIP joint transfer. But before that, I think I, I still like to give you some background um, data that you will understand why we trying to modify the technique and try to uh, improve the, the technique, especially emphasizing on the extensive mechanism reconstruction. Probably this can solve some problem of the uh, PIP joint transfer. So this is a paper in 2008 from uh, Jan Arenberger that uh, in that uh, systematic review, actually they show that uh, there were several problems. Some of the reason could causing the extensive lack of the PIP joint transfer that including some intrinsic problem that such as the pre-existing hematoid deformity and some thicker planned up plate of the toe, probably this may be something native that uh, we will not be able to, or we'll be able to do to, to solve this problem in the future. Well, until we have uh, more improved in technique, of course, but in some surgical technical point of view that uh, we, we do notice that something might be not really correct or something we haven't be able to correct the problem such as uh, tension or the intercalatic joint graft not to be too long and some bolstering phenomenon but i think these may not be the uh, 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 real reason for for the cases because most of the time we were put in in a, a quite uh, satisfactory lens of the joint we can have a, a very tight tension on the extensor tendon, but the extensor legs likely to be a problem. Well, we know about the, the initial of the vascular joint transfer is from uh, Guy Fouchere. He designed a skin trap on the dorsum of the PIP joint. And when he tried to uh, reconstruct the extensor, tendons actually just repair the proximal tendon to the proximal, uh, the toe proximal tendon to the proximal of the finger flexor, finger, finger extensor and distal to distal. 
but like that actually it's already ignore what is the uh, anatomy of the of the joint so from this picture i have shown before that uh, the study done by Sarafian topolysium actually they they already published the the uh, total extensor uh, anatomy and also the extensor mechanism in the paper in 1969 but i think that uh, for the hand surgeon probably we we don't really take good care of uh, this kind of paper be published although the the you can see the anatomy in below is quite similar to the extensor mechanism it's the uh, extensor mechanism on the on the fingers but actually they, they do they do have some similarity but there is some difference between the finger and the toes. This is uh, uh, most of the patients actually here, the triangular area actually is the middle pharyngeal base. You can see very good lateral band on the side of, of the PIP joint, but actually you cannot see anything, any tendon structure really inserted on the middle pharyngeal base. And unfortunately this actually is about, takes about 95% of the cases we do not have a central slip inserted on the middle pharyngeal base in, in, in the toes. And only less than 5%, we see more and more type 1 toes. And actually, we do see some so-called type 2 toe that do have the central slip crossing over the PIP and then inserted on the middle pharyngeal base. But this probably presents less than 5% of the cases. So occasionally you will see some good result from the toe transfers, or you can see some uh, good result of the uh, joint transfer in the past that you saw that on the peak literatures from papers, well, they, they show very good extension. But probably in my, in my suspicious, I, I think this case, uh, we show the best cases we have, but uh, the case probably just happened to be that 5% of cases, not in every case. Most of the time we saw the uh, toe transfers, actual result is mostly likely there's some crowd toe deformity after the joint transfer. So for, the, for, that, for that reason that we started to figure out how we can try to improve our joint uh, transfers. So from the, um, under the under the uh, uh, the understanding of the anatomy, then we started to uh, figure out how we can solve the problem. Uh, but we have to starting from the dissection of recipient fingers, and unfortunately, most of the cases that who had the, a PIP joint injury, they could have the central slip in quite poor quality. So in that situation, I would say that we, we were starting from evaluation of the lateral tendons. If the lateral tendons is still in good continuity, we will try to evaluate the lumbical muscle. If the lumbical muscle and the uh, part of the central strip lateral tendon has been injured, but still has one uh, lateral bands be available, we can try doing the technique with the so-called centralization, I just using this tendon centralize it as a extension of the of the finger. I'm sorry. And if everything likely was quite well, the uh, lateral bands was good and the lumbical muscle is good. The only deficiency is the central slip. Then that will go to the right side, just like those cases who has everything gone. There's no everything with fibrosis or or or, or the tendon defect at a zone two, zone three, lumbical intrinsic function is not good. Well, in this situation, we're just focusing on the reconstruction of the P PIP joint, that hopefully that we can have the, the, the joint be extended well, but uh, PIP probably we can just fuse it and the function will, will still be quite acceptable. So in, that, in, in these two situations that uh, for those cases who had a type one toe, then we will try to do the so-called central slip reconstruction. But for those who had a good insertion of the middle fence, probably we just have to do the EDL to EDC repair, then that's, that's already can have a good result. 
So after the background uh, data, then I will start to share the surgical case that uh, how I do the uh, uh, this uh, vascular PIP joint transfer. So this is a, a 36 year old male, he's a carpenter, and he just happened to be to served by a grinder on the dorsum of the uh, index and the middle, uh, middle finger. But the injury majorly was on the uh, index, the PIP has been destructed. So although the, the first surgeon already uh, the, uh, trying to uh, reduce and keep the alignment, but uh, actually it's failed to fix the bone and, and the alignment just uh, uh, lose the reduction afterward, after they remove the KYS, actually the joint was stiff, cannot move at all. So um, I take over the case, probably half a, more than half a year after the first trauma and the joint was totally destroyed and deformed. And so in this situation, we discussed with the patient that uh, probably one is that you can try to have the fusion of the PIP joint. And the, other, the second option will be the uh, vascular PIP joint transfer. And this patient is a carpenter. She would prefer him to have a, a, a better range of motion of this PIP. So he decided to have the uh, vascular joint transfer. And then I will show how I do the uh, recipient site preparation. And I will using the full screen, I share my full screen to show this case. You can see my screen well? Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay, so then we start. And as, as we note, notice that uh, the joint is like that, so um, the clinical picture that the patient actually has some deviation of the PIP joint, and the, the, the joint is actually nearly totally stiff, cannot move at all. So when I design a skin pedal here, sorry, when I design a skin pedal here, at the, at the beginning, of course, I, I tried the, the technique from Fouchier that uh, I designed a skin pedal more on the dorsum of that. But in the first case, I could, I could not uh, see the extensor mechanism well. And also that when I, when I uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, reconstruct the extensor tendon, if you do have a, uh, uh, skin pedal on the dorsum of this uh, donut toe joint, then I think that will be quite difficult for us to do any extensive reconstruction. So purposely, I try to design a skin pedal on the side of the joint, and then that can uh, expose the, the extensive tendon uh, on the dorsum. And also that if we need uh, to place the uh, uh, preserve extensive tendon, extensive mechanism of the finger, then it can be put on the uh, dorsum of the PIP joint well. So we, I, I started to design a skin pedal on the tibia side of the toe joint. And the second reason for that is that uh, nutrition vessels actually will go on the side of the metaphysis and uh, also from the uh, epicondyle basis. So basically, the skin pedal just uh, good enough to cover on the uh, nutrition artery to the joint, to the bone, and that could protect the vessels well. So that's the two reasons that I designed the skin pedal up here. And the incision will be crossing over the uh, uh, toe that help us to do a circumferential degrowing of the toe PIP. Then we can do the resection of the joint and for uh, harvest the, the toe joint uh, for the transfer. And of course that uh, we can extend it our, our dissection. Uh, usually I will use the uh, superficial venous system of the, of the foot for uh, the drainage vein and uh, using the uh, uh, metatarsal artery uh, as a, a, no matter is a dorsal system or plantar system. Basically I, I will try to using a larger vessels for the osmosis that uh, try to make the microsurgery safe, that we can sleep better in the night. 
So we continue the presentation. So for the finger that are uh, at the volar surface, I would do the Brunner's incision. But of course, if the if the case that the flexor tendon is still was 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 uh, not injured at the beginning, the the for those cases who has just the uh, uh, deformed PIP and uh, at the in, at the beginning of the injury, the tendon was okay. Then we do not have to do anything about the flexor. Then in that case, I would just do a shorter incision on the on the our recipient vessels and to choose which side would be uh, our recipient arteries. And basically, uh, if there's uh, some scars on the, on the fingers, because since from our last pictures that you notice that the skin pedal will be on the tibia side of the, of the toe. So for the left foot, the skin pedal will be, uh, will, will be here that be uh, on, on the, a radius side of the uh, left index here, then the artery should be on the radius side of the of the uh, index finger. So in that case, this will be a, 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 our recipient artery. But of course, if this finger happened to be a, a case that who had the uh, revascularization before that, then you have to choose which side of vessels that is suitable for the anastomosis. If radial artery being used at uh, last time or be repaired last time i would not i would try not to uh, sacrifice this one and if the uh, other one was repaired then i would try to use the uh, uh, mid, uh the uh, neighboring distal artery as a recipient artery and i would put the skin pedal on the other side in this case but uh, of course, in this case, that uh, it just happened that uh, there's uh, some scars on the radial side. I would try to use the skin pedal to replace the scar on the on the radial side. Then I choose the radial digital artery as my recipient vessel. So on the dorsum, I will usually uh, have a big curve of incision that to explore the the, the extensor tendon extensor mechanism uh, from zone one to zone five. And uh, our recipient vessel usually is on the dorsum of around the M MCP joint here, that the vessel will be more, much more sizable, large one. And uh, I think we make the micro as a macro, that would be even better for the microsurgery. And since that the skin pedal will be on the radial side, I will do uh, a marking that here will be around the PIP joint. So marking around uh, uh, one centimeter longer extension and about 1.5 to 2 centimeter extension then curve to the other side of the digit. And okay, so study from a skin incision. So curvy linear incision. And because the PIP joint was the most injury part, so there's more scars here. So try not to start in your, our dissection from here. So I approach from where that is less of injury, such as the middle fairings, then following the extensor tendon and try to uh, going through a single plan. If there's a lot of scars, just use the people to, to do the dissection, not to use the cartridges and even not the bipolar, just give a sharp dissection of the tendon, not try not to give more injury of the tendon. And when there's less scars at the proximal phase, you, we can dissect it with the scissors again. And then for the recipient vessels, we can use the band fighter to mark them before that. If not, we can use a, a rubber tourniquet uh, to let the band engorge, then we can find out and then prepare the band. So in this case, I prepared two bands on the side. Then we start to keep on dissecting the extensor tendon. We do wear cartridges. And because uh, as we mentioned that the PIP joint here will be more scarring. So that'd be more difficult to dissect. And we have to do a, a degrobing uh, circumferentially that enable us to resect the PIP joint from the finger. But scars here, that would be more difficult to approach. So we study from 
somewhere that is out of injury zone, try to find out the uh, volus digital artery neurovascular bundle, prevent them from injury, preserve the vessel. And for those cases who has the injury, the, the anatomy might be already distorted. So sometimes the, the, bed, the artery will stick to the bone quite much. So be very careful for that. So have to study from somewhere that is out of injury zone. So in this case, they have uh, quite severe adhesion at the zone three and find out somewhere that zone two, zone four, that's this uh, adhesion try to dissect it from that but if you miss some uh indirect tissue hardened tissue fibrotic tissue try not to use the uh, dissector to to elevate that still using the people so that makes a, a sharp and nice dissection of the extensor tendon but of course not every case could have a, a, a extensor like this some of the case have the injuries uh, you'll be you find out that the extensor is the the quality was poor. So that's why we have to customize the cases that uh, trying to do, try to uh, using different technique of extensive reconstruction for the, for the different cases. So yeah, again, that uh, try to detach, even the central state was detached. So lysis everything. Okay. Then starting to explore the flexor site. In this case, that uh, there's some adhesion of the uh, flexor tendons. Yeah, before the before the surgery, actually, the patient cannot move that even uh, the VIP joint cannot move well. So I believe that the extent the flexor tendon also uh, with some adhesion. But for some cases that uh, do have severe scarring of the finger at the uh, proximal level, I would suggest that we do that in two stages. Just transfer the joint first, do tenorolysis secondarily. So yeah, we already dissected the lateral surface. And now we uh, open up the flexor sheath, tenorolysis again. Not too severe, but yeah, we, we have to uh, try to release it and try to uh, release the FDS because the FDS was inserted on the middle phantom base. We tried to detach part of the insertion at the proximal part of the middle phantom base. That allows us to resect the PIP joint. And then the recipient artery, not too typical, you can find that at the MP joint level, the digital artery. Okay, so that's the first part of the dissection and then to the donor side okay so as, as we design the skin pedal on the on the uh, tibia side of the pip joint so for the uh, taiwanese actually the middle fence length middle fence usually is around 12 to uh 15 millimeter is just give me around uh usually just give me around one centimeter of, of lens at the middle band so um when i resect the pip chain from the finger i'll have uh, about uh uh 25 millimeter resected from the finger and i will try to harvest 23 millimeter from the toe joint so at the beginning we were dissecting the uh superficial vein first of course even said we, we said the superficial vein definitely is not just at the subdermal layer these vessel was too tiny for the osmosis so the larger superficial vein will be a little bit deeper under this uh, subcutaneous layer and under the tourniquet uh, and be sure that when you do the is sanguination do not do a full is sanguination uh tourniquet of the of the sanguinate all the blood from the foot that allowed you to leave some blood inside of your vein that you, you'll be easier to find out these veins uh with a different color and for some people who had the uh, uh, thicker fat tissue around the uh skin petals 
that I uh, said that we, we were using the, the band that uh, drench from drainage from this skin pedal. So that band uh, should be included into your skin pedal. So usually the band will be quite close on the side of the of the of the skin flap or just part of it on the on the, on inside of the skin flap. So be sure not to injure some branches that will uh, go on go later already and then cause to have a branch uh, go immediately again and try to inc include those vessels. Then we can just do a a, a more superficial dissection just like a, a subcutaneous dissect, uh, subdermal dissection of the skin flap and then to include more soft tissue or band inside of your uh, uh, skin pedal. So you can see the band here. So uh, the distal part of that keep continuing. Uh, yeah, yeah, so go at nearly at the subdermal layer. And then you see some band that do go laterally, will never come back, then just do ligation of the vessel and, and keep those closer to your skin flap. Those then could be useful and don't sacrifice them. But at the distal half, I said at the distal half of the skin pedal, these vents will be not, will be uh, useless. We don't need these vents, so you can do cautery of that, it will be fine. And then we do the extension of the incision. So cut through all these ways. And especially there are lots of uh, bands here. So do, do some cut to prevent the bleeding afterward. And this skin prep actress allow us to dissect toward the TB, uh, fibula side of the, of the PIP joint. Okay. So we we will see the uh, print, uh, the, the the fibula digital artery was will actually can be seen on the side here. So try to preserve that, then you can preserve the toe after uh, after you transfer the joint. So most of the fibula digital artery is available and uh, as and it's already enough for for the survival of the toe at the uh, joint transfer. Yeah, digital, digital neurovascular bundle will be around here. Okay, so then we do unroofing the bands. I'm still doing the bands now. So of course, trying to a little bit skeletalize the band that help us to, to uh, uh, identify the, the pedicle well. And branches going to the first ray can dissect it and ligate it. But sometimes there's some uh, communication band from a superficial to a deep band system. I said that, um, well, in certain cases that uh, if you could not include a good superficial band from the skin pedal, you you be not be able to find a good band. Some patients actually do have very tiny, uh, thin uh, superficial band system. In that case, we always have our, our communication vessels, communication branches from the superficial band system to the uh, come, uh, deep band assistant, which is the uh, concurrent band of the FDMA, then using that uh, concurrent band that will go in along with the digital artery. And although we said digital artery, actually they, all, they still have some concurrent band go with, along with this digital artery level. So using that deep band, deep band system and connect it to the superficial band here, then I can use a larger diameter band of the superficial band to do osmosis to the uh, finger band. So that's another way that we can using a, a, a superficial band system uh, by these uh, connect, connecting vessels. 
So after, after the uh, dissection of the uh, arteries, and I will rotate the knee, I will just uh, external rotate the knee, bending the, bend, bending the uh, lower leg a little bit. So that make me uh, a little bit at the lateral view of, of the PIP joint. Okay. And here, when I do the uh, incision on the uh, lower border of the skin pedal, um, try not to use the uh, skin hook on this side because uh, I said we, we do not try to tether the skin pedal from a PIP joint. So probably just protect that with your thumb. And again, that uh, when we do the dissection, we try not to uh, injure the soft tissue here uh, between the digital artery and the skin pedal. So we can do the, uh, a little bit likely the subdermal dissection of the skin flap on, over here first, on this side first, until you saw the digital artery on uh, the plantar surface of the PIP. We'll see that later. Okay, so the digital artery is likely here. Then we can dissect it, this tissue away that, uh, well, we can try to preserve the, uh, the, the connection between the artery, soft tissue, and skin pedal, and the joint. So you can see the digital artery here. And the nerve, most of the time, will go along with the uh, digital artery and usually will be on the plantar surface. In this case, the nerve should be here. Sh nerve should be here, a little bit yellow, white tissue here. Here will be the nerve and artery here. Okay, continuing on roofing uh, our vessels. So digital are here, and then here we'll go uh, to the trifurcation area at this zone. So sometimes for the uh, digital nerve, plantar digital nerve that go too close to uh, our uh, digital artery, very difficult to dissect between the nerve and the artery at the uh, PIP joint level. You can start it from the uh, trifurcation area to, that is around the MTP joint area. The nerve will go a little bit far away from the, uh, uh, the digital, the plantar digital artery then you can start it from here and then go in distally to dissect the nerve away from, we preserve the nerve to the toe. We don't need a nerve for the, for the joint. So in that case that we just preserve, preserve the nerve and starting from the proximal to distal. And that's the digital artery continuing dissecting toward the uh, MP joint area, the trifurcation area, the distal communication vessel. And here is about the MTP joint already. Here's about the MTP joint already. So interesting that I also demonstrate this one, this vessel, this uh, uh, plantar digital artery. There will be a branch from the plantar digital artery, or from for some cases, the the for the uh, anatomic variations. Another, uh, some cases from the FPMA, uh, uh, from the first plantar metatarsal artery, and they will have a branch uh, perpendicularly to the axis of the, uh, these uh, digital vessels, and that's the articular branch to the MTP joint. So uh, if you are trying to uh, harvest the MTP transfer, this zone here actually is quite important that if you have this vessel connected to the joint well, the vascularity of the joint will be very good. So in this case, that's a PIP, so I, I, I will like it in this one. They're usually around uh, 0.5 to one millimeter. They will have 
artery and also concomitant the vein with that. So continue uh, dissecting the vein, uh, the, the artery distally, then do the ligation of the distal runoff. And cut the distal runoff. So when we do the osteotomy from the uh, from here, actually, that uh, the vessel already be disrupted. And before we continue cutting the, the bone, one thing that cannot be taken away is the, the flexor tendon. So now using this position, still lateral position, do the incision on the flexor tendon, she's open up the flexor sheath. And then, um, uh, well, vessels there, so be careful. We just use a scissor to open up the flexor sheath. We want to preserve the FDL, the flexor tissue longest there. And now I'm cutting the FDB because the FDB is inserted on the middle bearings of the of the toe, so we don't need that. So we we detach the is the insertion of the FDB, and then we turn it back to uh, the uh, supine position and continue uh, the osteotomy tendon uh, uh, severance. So marking the PIP joint. So in this case, actually, I measure about one centimeter from the PIP joint. And then I cut that nearly the zone one, the, the, the extensor tendon the zone one. And uh, cut the periosteum a little bit longer here, closer to the DIP joint. And then preserve some of the periosteum for later on when we transfer to the uh, finger joint to closure on the, on the finger. So dissection a little bit of the periosteum, not too much. Do not uh, all the way to the, P, do not do that all the way to the PIP joint, but just a little bit long enough for the osteotomy not to cut the periosteum. And I'm dissecting the EDL tendon from the sesto sling on the tibia side. And then EDB tendon is on over here. So we just preserve the EDB tendon for the toe. So dissected the, the tendon as far as possible, then cut the EDL tendon. Then I'll measure about 20, uh, totally 23, so it'll be 13 millimeter from the PIP. Again, although measure here that we, we cut a little bit more perosteum from the, from the donor side for the coverage for the osteosynthesis later on. Okay, and we do the circumferential uh, degrowing of the perosteum. Uh, it's not necessary to do the suture, but that's easier to see that. So I just uh, put a suture there for when we do the osteotomy. So measure again, about 10 millimeter from a PIP joint. Okay, and do the cut. For the Taiwanese, actually, is that I said that we just about 12 millimeter to uh, no, some cases to have uh, a taller guy, they could have a longer toe that uh, could give me about 15 millimeter, but most of the time, not more than that. So most of the time I just have is 10 millimeter from the, from the middle bearings. So cautery on the uh, other side, detach the tendon. Okay, and we do the, uh, uh, proximal osteotomy. So measure for 23 from here. Okay, so that's 23. And when we do now, so you can see that I try to, I try to uh, do the osteotomy parallel to the PIP joint, not uh, vertical to the axis of the, of the, of your toe. Sometimes you will fool you that for some cases that the, the, the toe was deviated before the transfer, but uh, well, you just try to uh, make sure that your osteotomy is parallel to your PIP joint. Okay, so we do the osteotomy vertically. Um, hopefully that uh, we can do a very parallel osteotomies that uh, make the inset faster that you don't have to 
uh, just your, uh, uh, the, the, the inset, the osteosynthesis, that uh, if you cut it a little bit oblique or, or too much at the dorsum, or sometimes on the, on the, on the tibia side or on the fibula side, then you have to try to uh, correct the deviation uh, uh, with, uh, uh, when you do the inset. So if you can do a very parallel uh, uh, osteotomy, that'd be easier. So vents here, artery there, we already do the osteotomy, be holding by my assistants, and we will remove all the other soft tissues, not, not, not to uh, uh, not have to be included in our prep. And there's not much vessels around here, digital artery there. Then here, actually, it's maybe some tiny vessels, but not no big one. So we can just detach that safely, not to worry about that. So from here, that will that will go to the artery, and then we go to so-called uh, retrograde dissection. Dissected the, the vessel to the big toe, dissected the uh, vessel to the planta system, and we use the uh, FDMA in this case. But for some cases that do not have a good connection vessels to the, uh, the dorsal system, or the dorsal FDMA was too small for the osmosis, I will use the planta system. Basically, I will, do, I will not split the toe. I will not split the web space. I was just uh, uh, using the, uh, the, the planta artery uh, distal to the transverse metatarsal ligaments. And if I need a longer uh, pedicle, I will just do grafting. I will not hesitate for that. So I, here I will just stop here that uh, we continue retrograde dissecting toward the, uh, the, the, the proximal part and then uh, let the vessel Right, so then I will share um wait a minute. Okay, the inset. There's, there's some time time limitation, I have to be a little bit faster. So uh we do secret wiring for the for the uh inset. Um so the shape of the uh middle fan actually is quite similar, the toe and the uh, mid banks like here that so it's not very difficult to see the uh, rear ap axis but marking before you you try to do the uh, uh osteosynthesis and these wires was about 0 0.38 to 0 0.4 millimeter in diameter and that is already strong enough for the for the inset for the PIP. And using the same drill hole, now I'm passing the four proling. I'm sorry. So this is a four proling suture from the planta side, from a volar side to the dorsum. Another one. So it's a proling suture suture two head proline suture to the dorsum and then I will suture to the perosium through the perosium and to the little band of the p of, of, of the toe extensor another side perosium and and the toe extensor so when we tie this four proline then that the, the little band actually will be attached to the perosium quite well so here is another important point that uh, how to define the, the rear AP axis. So you can see that I see from the distal to the proximal, the axis of rotation, that would be the true AP axis of the, of the, of the proximal bearings here. Uh, not be fooled by the shape of the, of the top proximal bearing. Sometimes it would be a little bit oblique in the eclipse. So you thought that the AP was like that, but that was wrong. So you had to make sure that you have to rotate your fingers, rotate and see the, the axis of fraction, PIP and PIP then, and, and marking your, your rear AP axis, then do the drill hole. So 
so a little bit too too much some some spur here then i, I try to burning out lens is okay then yep axis again osteosynthesis so using the wire again wire again so after after we fix we have to check the alignment So when it flex, make sure that uh, the rotation is, is, is okay. Okay, then, then we shoot it. Now we, I'm repairing the perosium. So that will uh, just covering on the uh, circuit wires that will not expose or irritate the, the extensor tendon later. Okay, so, so that shoot the perosium at the distal and then uh now is uh, i'm sorry so now i'm tying down the forward pulling so that make the uh the uh little bands actually attached to the pairs then tightly so that make it uh, insertion on the middle bands then then shoot to the uh, pairs them at the prox proximal bands level after that i will do the interweaving of the extensor tendon so at the center of the extensor tendon, then pull the EDL across the uh, central part of that. The mattress suture. And I'll do two weaves of that. The second weave. And do the suture again. Then before the before the artery, then and as mostly I will try to close a little bit. And now using the plenal strand to pass the artery to the volar side and then prepare for the anosmosis. Okay, so that's uh, in this case in a uh, five months result fraction is quite acceptable and another case before the stiff nearly no movement at the mp joint and after the surgery the fraction and third case before the surgery stiffness and after the surgery there's some extensor leg at the DIP joint, but the PIP joint is quite a good. Okay, so so um, final slide here. Actually, uh, um, if you are interested in the uh, the surgical technique, actually I have a, a very detailed description of uh, how I do uh, the technique I just show, and in the paper that last year. Um, uh, two years ago, 2019, that uh, published in the General Hand Surgery in European Volume. Uh, if you are interested in this, can please uh, don't, uh, try to look at this paper and then you, you will find all details inside. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lin. Um, fantastic and lots of details for people to soak in. So whilst people are trying to digest all that information, I wanted to ask you if you uh, more general questions. Um, so can you tell us how did you get into vascularized joint transfers? How did you come to this field and how, you know, how many have you done so far? Yeah, actually, um, well, I'm, I'm starting from as a, a trauma surgeon. So I do trauma services. We do have lots of uh, hand trauma at the, at, the, at the early years that I started my practice. Uh, as attending staff is uh, from 1998. So during those years, actually, we do have a lot of uh, head trauma. So I started from my, from the toe transfers. And um, well, the first case actually happened to be in 2006. That's already uh, seven, eight years after I became the attending staff that uh, my colleagues tell me that since you have experience in the uh, toe transfer, do you, do you like to try something 
on the PIP, on, on the PIP joint, a vascular joint transplant. I said, well, I, I have no experience of that, but I can try. So I, I started to do that, just happened to start to do that in 2006. Yes, that, uh, that's the beginning of my practice. And well, after that, I'm, I'm fascinated with this uh, small flap procedures that is tiny, delicate and interesting. And, and happened to find out that uh, some uh, niche or some, some kind of uh, uh, experience that people do not have that I think that uh, although we already know to have uh, a lot of good imprints at that time, but uh, well, vascular joint transfer, PIP joint transfer still has a role in, in our reconstruction. So I think that uh, we, we still need to continue uh, to modify and improving the surgical technique probably that can uh, uh, do much help to our patients to give them, uh, to offer them a good, another good choice and, and, and a good results. Thank you. And uh, can I just check that? Um, so so mo the main indication um, in your practice for vascularized joint transfer is post-traumatic um, yes. joint problems. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, can you tell us a bit about your thinking uh, in terms of reconstructing the joint? You've mentioned that, you know, there are implants available. Um, so, you yeah. know, some people advocate for arthrodesis. Um, where, how, how, what's your algorithm? Yeah, the, I, I think first of all that uh, we have to make sure that for most of the uh, implant arthroplasties, that uh, uh, the indication for that, you definitely have to have uh, a better ligaments and good joint capsules for, uh, to stabilize your implants. So for the cases who do not have a good joint capsules or, or for some patients that actually they do have already have the fusion and actually to revise to um, some mobile joint. I think in that situation, uh, you, you will not be able to do the implant arthroplasties. And the other reason is that uh, so far that uh, uh, we know, even though the technology improved a lot, we can have a, a, a lifelong processes for the knee, for the hip, but uh, so far, we still do not have something for the finger or for the wrist. So we're still waiting for that. Before that, uh, we, we still need to uh, uh, try to offer some uh, long-standing um, uh, options for the patients. And so far that uh, uh, in my series that my cases had, uh, uh, the longest one had been around 12 years after my first surgery, in, uh, second surgery in 2008, the patient kept following my, in my clinic. Well, the, 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 con the condition is still uh, the same as, uh, uh, as the condition I, I just repaired it. And so, well, so far likely it's still uh, well survived. Uh, and another, uh, I think it's a global indication for the vascular PIP joint transfer will be uh, for the pediatric and also for those cases who had uh, composite soft tissue injury, associated injury with the joint. In those two indications, actually, that, that I think that's a general uh, consensus for, for people who were willing to use the vascular joint for, for the reconstruction. Right, okay. And, and interesting that you mentioned about the um, uh, you know people with the um, traumatic injuries. Do you, do you always do the um, the joint transfers as an elective procedure after they've had something done in the first instance, or do you ever do it acutely? Um, yeah, we, we do have case that uh, uh, they actually was post, also the post traumatic uh, happened to have the the uh, joint be resected by the instruments, um, by the, uh, some power instrument uh, for the, of the carpenters or something that, uh, yeah, I do have one to two cases that uh, uh, had to have uh, immediate vascular joint transfer after the trauma. And of course, it's not really have to do that urgently, but uh, 
well, the, uh, the, the ER uh, surgeon, they will just stabilize that with uh, temporary with some KWAS and then refer the case to me and I can do the muscular joint immediately at the first hospitalization. Yet, I think that uh, that actually also make uh, the dissection much easier for the yeah. For the uh, extensor tendon sector, you don't have to struggle from those scars tissues, those fibrotic bands. So much easier and normal anatomy, easy to dissect. So I think for the trauma case, sometimes it's even easier. But of course, for just like we do, do the toe transfer, sometimes it's, it's difficult to uh, explain or to persuade the patient or or the patient do not really know what they want uh, for their hand reconstruction. And in that situation, of course, we not uh, try to emphasize that or, or just pre, pre, uh, offer only one option for the patient. I will let them uh, choose what they want and then we do uh, do the surgery secondary. That, that's, I think that's acceptable. Great. And uh, am I right in thinking you've done about just under 100 cases of these so far? Yes. Right. I've, so I've you've done got... around 100 cases. Okay. So, that I mean, that's a huge experience. And it's great to hear that this reconstruction is durable because unlike, you know, the implant reconstructions all have a certain lifespan. Um, but now that you, you're coming, you know, you've done so many, what constitutes a successful reconstruction for you? I think, um, well, you, first of all, you have to have a very motivated patient. If the patient um, is not really motivated, they do not know what they want or what they need, they cannot uh, uh, proceed a, a good rehabilitation after the surgeries. Actually, you just provide a viable joint, but it still can be a stiff joint without any rehabilitation. So motivated patient is quite important. And uh, secondarily is that uh, I think before the surgery, I always explain to my patients so far in my case series that uh, you notice that uh, for the cases that before the surgery, they might already have two, three or four times of surgery before you take over the case. So they already have a lot of scars and you probably cannot uh, make it a no scar environment. So basically in my series, I, I will say I still have 40% of case I need revision of the joint transfer. That is to try to do the uh, secondary tenolysis, try to do a secondary joint release to get a better function. Yeah, in, in those cases, uh, uh, I, I explained to them well, the first time it, it's a long surgery. I, it took me about six to eight hours for the joint transfer. But after you got a viable joint, then everything will become a conventional surgery. If you do have some tendon adhesion or you have some um, joint contracture, you need some release in the second stage. Yeah, we just do that. And you can have a better uh, range of motion after all the, all the lysis. So basically, we just provide a viable tissue first. And uh, well, if the patient uh, pre-op condition was not that bad, it, probably they can have a, a, a that's 16% of cases that they, they can have a, a good result at, 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 at the first time. If not, well, we just do that secondarily about in six months later that uh, we, uh, after the rehab become more stabilized that uh, the patient might need some release secondarily. But well, all these patients actually, they, they'll still be very happy that they get the result after the secondary revision surgeries. So I think, well, um, maybe you not be able to give the patient uh, a immediate good result, but just remember you, you already provide a viable tissue that you'll be able to, to make them a better range of motion uh, with some revision. Great. Okay. Well, that's fantastic because that follows on to lots of questions from people, particularly around the rehabilitation protocol. Can you give us a yes. bit more insight about that? Okay. So in my series, actually, I will have uh, my therapist to help me. Then usually we started to have uh, some active range of motion 
at the fourth week. That's three weeks of totally mobilization with uh, uh, extension sprinting. And from the fourth week, we will start to have the patient to start some active range of motion. But at this moment, that uh, the joints will be a little bit stiff and swirling, and so that will be very difficult to move at this moment. So don't worry, just ask the patient to start to move. And after six weeks, the bone union tendon healing is much better, stronger than we at that. Uh, and then I will have my therapist actually only by the therapist, they will study to give some uh, uh, gentle passive range of motion of the, of the joint. And mostly, most of the time when the patient training themselves, they were just allowed to do the active motion. And for these cases, we noticed that uh, extension is, uh, is our problem. Usually the, the friction is not a problem. We, we almost can get the friction of the, of the PIP of the toe PIP joint. What uh, I means that uh, if the toe before the transfer, they can the, the, the toe joint can move from zero to 75 degrees. Most of the time, we'll be able to uh, achieve 75 degree of friction of that of that finger. But the extension is another story. We have tried to do the reconstruction, and also after some um, transfer and. Uh, ischemia, reperfusion, and I think some uh, 10, 15 degree of loss is uh, well likely to happen. But if that is from zero degree to uh, 15 degree, we said, so that, that is from 15 degree to 75 degree of range of motion, it's about 60 degree of range of motion. Actually, that's uh, pretty good enough for, for, the, for, the, for the patients. And, but, always I will emphasize the uh, extensor leg to the patient. So I will have them to have the nice sprinting until six months, at least oh. six months. So for some cases, if not, uh, they, they will not uh, uh, feel any discomfort to using that. I will say it's okay that you continue to wearing the sprint, the nice sprint, until even one year after, so that would be even more stabilized of the, your condition of the extension. So basically, uh, at least six months of a uh, nice sprinting, uh, that, that's the uh, that's, uh, 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 bottom line. Yeah. Okay. And so, so at what time point would you say is when you find out how, what the long-term outcome is likely to be? Would it be at 12 months or 18 months? Usually I would say at this, 12 months will be more stable. But of course, for those cases who have a good surgery and good outcome at the six months, most of the time they already achieved the 95% of the results. So uh, even longer follow up uh, without the rehabilitation, they will not lose too much from that. So will be quite okay. But well, that's it kind of in average, we can say that. But for some patients do have very heavy loading mm. uh, manual workers, they need to have very powerful grip all the time. For those cases, for a longer follow-up, I do found out that they would have a little bit more extensive leg than the first 12 months. Right. So I, I, I believe that that could be re some work related if they uh, do have a, a, a manual work, working needed, so probably friction will be stronger than the extension that the, the, the patient still will have a little bit more extensive leg than the, the first 12 months. Right. Yeah, that's my follow, follow up. Okay, uh, and in terms of um, just a bit of um, controversy, in terms of the, you know, the manual workers who, who need a lot of um, strength in their hands, some people would say, well, why don't you just fuse the joint in a kind of functional position? How do you answer that? First of all, that uh, the best indication uh, for, the, for the joint transfer, I would say that would be on the middle and the ring fingers. Right. These two are the most powerful digits hand for the grasp and uh, for the hand function. So if one of the digits is injured, the, even though that the other digits is okay, if you fuse the joint, 
probably the patient might have some difficulty in grasping some smaller objects. Larger one is okay with suffusion, but when this, uh, you try to handle a rope, that could be some difficult. So a better range of motion will be improve the function, but usually I still offer two options to the patient. That still depends on the patient because one, you need a longer rehabilitation surgery, a long surgery, more expense, and the others actually probably three months later, you, you, you already can use that in your, in your work very well. So that's another story. So basically, uh, I will leave the option to the patient, but I will encourage the patient to do the joint transfer, especially for the middle and the ring finger. Although you saw some uh, my, my demonstrations on the index finger, <laughs> a lot of index uh, patients of index finger, they, they act, they know we can do joint transfer and then they ask for that. But for the index finger, for the little finger, for the little finger, actually I hardly, we never, I can say I never do a joint transfer. I said fusion is fine. Patient can accept that. For the index finger, depends on the patient. I will ask, uh, tell the patient that the pinch actually is quite acceptable. If you, if you have a fusion of the PIP joint, you have a good DIP, you have a good MP, well, a fused PIP, just for the pinch, it should be okay with the fusion. But of course, that if the patient like a mobile one or for some special uh, indications that the patient just have, I have, I have a patient that who doing some grass wear, he need to holding the white in, in this shape, holding the white to cut the grass in this shape. So he, he said, she says she need to have a good mobile in this finger, otherwise she lose her job. So, well, that's a different indication. So, well, it depends on the patient. I sure. will explain the pros and cons and to the patient and let them choose. Great, okay, thank you. Um, and we've only got a few minutes left. I want to ask you one other question because a few people have asked about this. It's to do with your skeletal fixation. Can you just tell us a bit more about how you achieve that? And have you had any problems with failure with just the wires? Um, I think failure of the wires at the middle phalanx osteosynthesis is, is, I can say, is never. But failure at the proximal phalanx, yeah, that could be some problem, especially for the female. The proximal phalanx of the female, act, uh, the toe, I mean the toe, proximal phalanx of the female actually is much slender than the male. So the shape of the, the toe actually is, is uh, it creates like this, yeah. but the finger is, is vertic is horizontal. One is yeah. vertical in the long axis, one is horizontal. Now we have more difficulty to do the osteosynthesis between that. So in, in this, during recently, I actually will add a 90-90 wire, not only the uh, parallel circuit wire, I do even a one, horizontal one, uh, a 9090, to make the proximal phalanx with more stability. So with that, actually the, the uh, fixation is quite uh, stable and good. Uh, when you say 90, 90, do you mean? 9090 wire, yes. 9090 wire. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that make it even stronger, but 9090, I will do two parallel and then 9090. So two parallel one and then one, horizontal. So three wires for the proximal phalanx fixation, that would be more stable. And to have, I, I do not have more, uh, actually uh, in my earlier days, I will have more osteoplasty. Uh, I have to correct a uh, correction osteotomy uh, for the revision in my earlier few cases, but later I actually have less and less uh, case that I need to revision of the osteosynthesis. Right. And okay. for some case that you lose a little bit of the uh, fixation, I mean that uh, for the, uh, here is the joint. If you lose some, uh, with some dorsally angulated of your toe joint, if that is less than 10, 15 degree of uh, angulation. Well, actually we found, I found out that in my cases, the, the result make that too much difference to have uh, a, a very straight 
structural bearings from a later view or a little bit dorsally angulated of the of the of the joint and that's interesting but probably my case is not uh, big enough i don't know is that true or not but i i found out that even there's a little bit dorsally angulated a little bit hyper extended up at the proximal fangs is tolerable is uh, is okay in the in the final outcome even the patient cannot uh notice that from the outer appearance from the from the outside yeah. only the x-ray will show the difference and, and and patient actually did not realize that okay uh, final two questions um how in, in your opinion how can we make vascularized joint transfers even better what are the next things we need to be able to solve what are the pro um, problems surgically um i believe that the uh, uh, current tendon tenorapid technique the tendon repair technique actually we are trying to improve our tendon repair and uh, also if we can uh, a very stable uh, fixation strong fixation in the future that we can give the patient um, even earlier rehabilitation such as two weeks after surgery not have to wait uh, totally mobilized for three weeks early mobilization i think that will help right and the other technical part is that I, i'm still modifying my technique now that uh, even from the case i showed today if i that was done um probably two years ago i i cannot remember that but nowadays if i saw a case like this i probably i will uh, at, the, at the finger extensor, I will split the central part of the tendon, central tendon, from the lateral bands. Hopefully, that leave uh, the lateral band be able to gliding, sliding on the side of the PIP joint. That might probably can make the DIP joint uh, in better in better range of motion, in better flexion. Actually, I, I do found some of my cases like this. The the the, the central strip and lateral band when they are fibrotic and fused to one, and uh, probably you can have a good uh, extension of PIP. But at the DIP is too extended as for patient actually, some kind of difficult to flex. So well, at the earlier case earlier days, I will said well I, we we can just do the fusion. We can correction and do fusion of the DIP J, but actually no patient asked me for that but nowadays probably i will in the technical part i will try to simulate the original anatomy of the finger extensors try to separate split the lateral band from the central step hopefully they function as they are and maybe that's a, some technical part we can try to improve right well that, yeah, i'm that, trying that, that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll look forward to seeing your next series in the maybe in a couple of Hopefully. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, very final question, and this is more a philosophical one, which is that you know when you take on a major, very complex reconstructive thing like the vascularized joint transfer, when you're starting out in this field, everyone will go through a learning curve, and you know the and. And that's the same with any field and people will have some early failures or, you know, or the outcomes are not as good as it, they would want, they would hope for. And a lot of people would then at that stage give up. But I've, I found you to be very inspirational because you, you thought that was, you know, part, part of the growth and you, you believed that you could achieve much better results. Can you tell us about that mentality? I think, of course, a uh, good, good part is that I started from the toll trends where you, we do still have some toll trends, although it's not much less than the series from Professor Fu Cheng Wei, that, but we still have that uh, fortunate to, in that environment, we still have uh, good experience in the toll to hand transfers. So starting from the, uh, the basis of the anatomy dissection, so we know the anatomy quite well at, at, the, at, the, at this, from the first web to the to the to the FDMA level that you already acquainted with that. But for the joint, I think I, I, I already tried to show the 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 technique I I used. I think uh, people trying to following that you will 
sure that uh, uh, you keep a good vessel with, with your toe joint and uh, I believe that uh, the learning curve will be shorter. But of course, if you do not have good experience in uh, uh, toe dissection before, I will strongly recommend that you should start it from the cadaver dissection first, trying to make a little, at least a little bit uh, acquainted with the, the anatomy uh, of the of the of the the vessels first, and um, I think well we we trying uh, we trying to uh, helping the people that as a as a physician as a surgeon that uh, um, I think uh, we, we I just keep that kind of curiosity that uh, well you uh, we still have lots of uh, question and problems in the hand surgeries that. Um, some uh, difficult part is we, we still could not find a good answer yet, yeah. but just uh, try be curious on this and then and focusing on that and, and try to solve your problem. I think, uh, well, you at this at this moment, vascular joints still have the role in our reconstructions. So uh, I, I encourage everyone should should try to do that. Yeah. Great. Well, that's it. That's a very inspirational um, point right at the end. Thank you very much for a, a wonderful presentation and sharing all the secrets. Okay. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.